Hi everyone, today we're going to look at the Productivity uh, 1000 series PLC contact and coil instructions. So this is our first time that we actually are looking at the instructions within the Productivity 1000 PLC and you'll notice that our instructions are listed on the left hand side here and we have the favorites. So if we go down to our normally uh, open contact we can right click on that contact and you will actually see add to favorites. If we do that, what it does is put the contact or that instruction within our favorite so we can refer back to that as opposed to going into under contacts and pulling that up. So it's a nice handy way. Now if we have a favorite that we want to get rid of, what we do is go back to their favorites, right click on it, and we can say remove from favorites. So a couple of little quick uh, uh, ways you can customize this, this uh, Productivity Suite programming software to your own needs that you want. So, if we look at our contact instructions, we have a uh, switch one, and as you saw before, what we do is we take that contact coil and we can copy it over. So if we click on that uh, switch one, you'll notice that uh, just calls up here, um, our window, and in our window, we can see, we can uh, refer back to our tag database and our system that's on there. So in this case here, it's a normally open contact going to an output. Now what we'll do is we will just look at our PLC. And currently right now, I know I'm connected. Here's my uh, CPU. It's, uh, and it's connected through my Ethernet port, which is connected right here. And there are my uh, output card, my in-out, and my simulator for my uh, I.O. that we'll be using. So here we have our switch one. We'll go to our first output one here. So if I look at, if I turn on switch one, and sure enough, that's exactly what will happen. You'll notice that now, since my switch one is open, my, or on, we have my first output that turns on, which is exactly what we expected. And if I turn that switch off, then sure enough, that output now comes off. So we are in program mode and what it's doing is it's doing our scan of our program. Now we've discussed scan before in our website here um, and we called it understanding the PLC program scan. So we were, this is where we read our inputs, execute our program, we do diagnostics and communication and then we update our outputs. So that's typically a PLC scan that uh, this logic will solve in a re relatively quick manner. So if we look at the next one, we have a normally closed. Now the normally closed means that if it's not enabled, which my switch is, then the output is on. And what you'll notice is that that's exactly what we have right now. Um, my output here too is on when my switch is not on. And so let's turn that on. And when we do, the output now turns off in that location. So that's my normally closed. So the next one we have is, um, our next instruction is actually a count. And as we told before, we can actually reduce the size here so we can zoom out a little bit here. So we can see, um, exactly what we're looking at and it's going off switch one and switch one then goes into a counter which is preset for 100 and the current value is 11 and their done bit is not on so it's zero and what we use is a uh, normally open edge trigger and the edge trigger is like a one shot um, for our PLC and one shot will turn on for one scan of the PLC so if I take a look at switch uh, number one, I'll turn it on and you'll see now my um, counter now increments by one. So now it's at 12. If I turn it off, it stays at 12. Hit it again. It now goes on and goes to 13. Turn it off, 14. So it will continue on that until I reach the count value. And then we have switch number three here, which will actually reset that counter back to zero again. So we can do that. And you can see that it zeroes it 
and goes back to zero. So that is my uh, differentiate up. So now if I did not use a differentiate up, what would happen is it would count on every single scan of the PLC. So I would have a number here that continuously rolls around. So when you do get that in your logic, when you're programming, just remember that a one shot is the way to go in order to solve that uh, scenario. So what you'll notice is that if I do click on that um, normally open normally or that uh, normally open edge trigger, you will actually get the option between the uh, rising edge of it or the falling edge. So when the bit comes on to off or from on um, off to on, so your choice. So the next instruction we have for our contacts are our comparison. Now the comparison here. Basically, here's my instruction, and currently right now I'm looking at the clock uh, seconds, and this is the real-time clock built into our, our Productivity 1000 series PLC, and I'm looking for greater than or equal to 30 seconds before an output that comes on, and the output that comes on is output number three. You can also notice that we can do an equal, not equal, greater than greater than or equal to like we have less than or less than equal to so at any time you would like some help on this we can hit the help it comes up with a nice help file you can actually see um, all the steps involved so we'll hit cancel on that and you can see right now uh, my seconds um, going up here and let me just uh, increase that a little bit so and once again, once it passes the 59 seconds, go back to zero, my output then turns off. So basically what we're doing is we're looking at um, a comparison to a particular value. And I'm using the system bits within the PLC, such as my clock bit, um, seconds. So you'll notice there in the system itself, there's a lot of different system bits we can pull on and come up with so in order to um, facilitate like a low battery like we'll see later so the next so that's my um, there are my contacts and this is all my instructions that are available to me for my contacts themselves then we move on to coils and the first coil uh, we want to talk about is our flasher and our flasher when we have switch number three on we will turn the output on and off at a certain rate, so it flashes. Now when we look at this, we should also look at timing charts. And if we look at the timing charts, this is the timing chart of the flasher. So we'll see that if the rung is enabled, which is this is, it will start flashing. So it turns it on and then off, and that produces one cycle. So that's my timing of my flasher. So currently right now, if this was set for, as it is, uh, a two second or 2000 millisecond interval, then it will be on for one second, off for one second. If we look back at our example, what we have is a flash rate of one second. So it'll be on uh, for half a second, off for half a second. So let's just do that. We'll turn switch three number on. And we're looking at the uh, output number four and sure enough that's exactly what's happening you'll see four is now flashing at half a second intervals so that's our flasher very very easy to implement and what you'll notice is that we can use this to sound warnings or um, to notify people that something's going to happen we'll turn switch number three off and the next one we'll look at is our debounce. Now, in our, this case here, what I'm doing is I'm using our comparison. We're going to look at the voltage of our battery and see if it's greater than our battery voltage compare, which is 30. It's just a value that I put into our register. And if it is, then it's going to send output number five on. So in our case right now, it's not and it's keeping that off. Now our debounce, what I'm using that is because the battery voltage can fluctuate. If it's not on solid, what'll happen is it'll go from 2930 and maybe on that verge, 
or 30 to 31 it's on that verge and what will happen is my output will start chattering which means it'll start turning on and off rather quickly so if we look at our timing chart for our um, debounce cycle what you'll notice is that if we have some chatter okay so this is on and off before the time base rate which we set for uh, a thousand uh, milliseconds or one second so that means that if I don't have a solid on signal for one second then the output will not turn on so what I need to do is have that on for one second then the output will turn on and then my deep bounce off time means that I just can't turn it off all the time it has to be off for at least one duration of that bounce or that bounce time that off time that I sent which was 1000 milliseconds one second so it has to be off for one second before it then turns off that output so that's a deep bounce very important instruction uh, previously um, this is um, you had to actually write some logic code in there with timers in order to do this type of timing this is all uh, brought to you right into one instruction so very nice uh, simple way of doing it now our next one is our or out now, this is kind of a unique one it allows you to do multiple outputs using the same tag so in this case here I have three uh, different inputs I have switch number four I have a low battery alarm or I have switch number five now either one of these will activate an output so I can have these rungs scattered throughout my program and my logic against will still be solved but instead of being just an out it's an or out so these are the exact same outputs and so if I hit switch number four turn it on the output you see comes on if I um, go down and switch number five you can see the same output turns on so I can have multiple um, rungs of the same output in different locations now this is easy for programming however troubleshooting may be a little different uh, difficult for you you have to look for other or out conditions in order to get all the different variables that may trigger that if it's on and you're not sure why so just a heads up um, be cautious when you're using that instruction now the next one we are going to use is the set and reset and the set and reset basically acts just as we have previously done in um, our programming series here and if we look at our uh, first program we've used the uh, start and stop and that actually came from our how to make a start and stop jog circuit in the PLC so that's exactly where our um, uh, program came from so in this case here we're using set and reset they kind of act very similar if we thought this was the uh, motor output output 7 these are my conditions to turn it on this is my conditions to turn it off so in this case here switch number 6 will actually turn it on and sure enough that's exactly what happens it turns it on you'll see switch number 7 will actually turn it off and you'll see switch 7 always overrides switch number 6 because of the sequence that I have set currently on my uh, logic so typically you want your resets always below your sets but there could be cases where you want to re inverse that and you want your set before your reset so that it defaults to be on if it if it has a condition if I turn that reset off again it turns on and then I can hit the reset anytime so that's my set and reset just like my start stop circuit that we did before next one next output instruction we have is a time coil and the time coil basically um, what it actually will do is um, it will turn on and then start my time coil at uh, 1000 milliseconds or one second now let's take a look at our um, timing chart to see how that will look and here's my time coil so what you'll see is on that time coil here's my instruction um, we're going we're going to start the time coil here and as soon as we start it it has to wait for the complete time cycle which is one second 
and then it will be turned off. So no matter how many times my input flickers, it will keep that on time for that duration, in our case here, one second, then turn it off. So that's my time coil. And let's just turn that on, which is eight down here. And you can see, sure enough, that's exactly what it did. It turned that coil on, waited a second, and then turned it back off again. So very handy instruction um, that to use. And the last instruction we have here is a toggle. Now the toggle switch is like our flip-flop switch or flip-flop in our, in our PLC. And we've done this before and I'll include some links in below to, to follow that up and, and you can see how that toggle actually will work. So on our toggle PLC, our toggle instruction, what you'll notice is that if I look up my timing chart again, and we'll switch over to the toggle. When I get an input here, it turns the output on. When I get the input again, it turns the output off. So that's the basic function of a toggle. That's why, why we also call it a flip-flop. So when the input goes on, it goes on. If it comes on again, it goes off. So it toggles that output on and off based on the input condition. So let's see that in action. And you'll see that's on switch number one. We're back to switch number one. So if I turn this on, my output turns on. If I turn it off, the output still stays on. And if I turn it on again, yeah, the output now comes off. So that's exactly what the that whole output is, or that whole uh, toggle information is. So one button can be controlled to turn it on and then turn it off at the same time. So this could be done like on a push button. So you'll see a very, very few, or very a lot of different control panels will have that type of circuit in it. Now we have two other instructions here on our output coils. One is our no operation. What it does is set a placeholder in our in our logic for future information. So you may want to put a placeholder, put some comments on about um, how you're going to write a certain part of code. So it's um, somewhat of a, a nice instruction to have just to put in once in a while. And then the final one is our end program. And what you'll see is the end program um, on the Productivity uh, 1000 series PLC, what you'll see is, or in our Productivity Suite, it'll fill up everything with an end program. So you always need one end to end the task that you're, you're running. And looking at our task management here, you'll see here's our task when we have on this code, um, it's running every scan for our contacts and coils. So the end program just marks the end of it, so it tells the uh, PLC scan to go back and start from the beginning again. So all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. If you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free eBooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.